All righty, hello. Hi, hi. Happy Halloween. Here we are. Okay, yes. Looking fine. Okay. We can jump right back into it from where we left off. Happy Halloween, Bear. Yeah. And hopefully they say something so I'm even more relaxed that I can actually hear them. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, devices, windows. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, so sorry about that. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, cheeks flushed, Rika-san applauds them enthusiastically and the twins reappear on stage to deliver a dip bow. Kid Black Spooky next Oh, <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> there it is. I can hear it. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're so cute. It's uh, the most Halloween-y thing that I guess we're gonna get uh, today. Them in costume. It's very cute. The two cats wear identical feline grins. Recovering from her overwhelming sense of admiration, Rikasan slips back into the role of Vice President of the Council of Nicaea. The final place we asked Rika-san to accompany us to was the St. Joseph's Theatre. <laughs> Glancing up to where I'm waiting in the corner, she abruptly stops when she sees that uh, what I'm holding in my hands, and her eyes turn suspicious. So, we're here because I want to bring my Amitya partner back to her usual cheerful self by dancing for her. Hey Ichidorin, hi hi, happy Halloween. This time she cuts me off, pointing at the wicker basket I'm holding. Feeling my cheeks heat up, I nod. Rika-san squeals and claps her hands together, but there's still one more thing. When I take a step closer to her, I see a little shudder run through her body. She blinks rapidly as though she can't quite believe what she's hearing. Then, after a brief moment, the light blossoms across her features. I hold out my hand to my ready and willing Amitya partner, and she takes it reverently, like she's accepting the proffered hand of a prince. A tune, cheerful but with an underlying tranquility, starts to play. Oh. Cute! We begin our dance. Swinging my basket, I stroll through the forest. Aware of the gaze of my audience, I recall the steps from the summer recital, Performing the same mime and showing off the position of my feet. Hey, Polly Blushy! Then, surprise, unpawned, I take uh, quick steps backward, uh, opening up space for Rika-san as the wolf to dance onto the stage. Yeah, we're dancing. Happy Halloween, by the way. 
Unlike my simple steps, she jumps high, pursuing me with grand jeté and fouetté. Then... Rika-san! Suo-san! With a smile, I allow myself to be captured sooner than I did the first time I performed this routine. Intuiting her intention, I entrust my entire body to my Anitia partner. Despite the restrictiveness of her uniform, her movements are light and elegant as she offers her hand to me. After raising me up in a simple lift, she laces her hand with mine. She dances from an arabesque to an attitude. Momentarily, she releases my hand only to find it once again. The arabesque displays her flexibility and the sleek curves of her form, distracting me from my own steps. Extended hands entwined, we twirl in a slightly sloppy but ultimately graceful attitude. The view out, of, uh, out from the stage is steeped in the dark sepia, making me feel like I'm inside an old movie. <laughs> My media partner is in full ballerina mode. <laughs> a smile tugs at her lips. We perform the final lift, the world spinning around us. Our spins widen with each turn. Until the curtain comes down, sorry. The curtain comes down on the stage with the gentle wolf embracing Little Red Riding Hood. I don't know if dancing is the best thing to do in the uniforms, right? Like, or like, sorry, it's a dancing is best performed in those uniforms because they seem restrictive and they're probably quite warm because they're winter uniforms as well <laughs><笑><笑><笑> Chest still heaving, she laughs, telling her that doesn't feel like a compliment. All danced out, my Amitya partner seems fulfilled. Love that they got into costume at least, yeah. <laughs> the twins are so cute. Uh, sighing, she sends a worried glance my way, but I reassure her that it's fine. えっと、その、え、最近りっちゃんが元気ないっぽいから、なんというか、そうちゃんが意見を感じたってわけなんだよね。うん。オリエンテーションのことは嘘ではないですけど、こっちのバレエが本命だったのですよ。好きなバレエ
the Bible presentation ceremony and the orientation event to welcome the new students. She pours room temperature milk into the warm cup placed before me, then adds the strong dark tea. <laughs> she scoops up two, two uh, teaspoonfuls of honey and deposits them into the cup too, making my tea smell and taste sugary sweet. She makes her own cup of honey milk tea, although she adds only one teaspoon of honey to hers. So, that's it. The she playfully lifts her cup and we clink them together. I raise the fragrant liquid to my lips. My taste buds de uh, delight in how the slightly astringent taste of the tea leaves is softened by the milk. Beneath it all, the sweet smell of honey curls its way into my nostrils, and I feel my shoulders relax as though a physical weight has been lifted from them. Ah, to have a Rika that constantly makes you tea. <laughs> that, that must be the life. そうさんにそう言ってもらえるなんて嬉しいわ。以前はうまい一辺倒だったけど、最近は蜂蜜ミルクティーがお好みだものね。え、優しい味がする。これはこれで入れるのが難しいのよ。蜂蜜とミルク
can like isn't there any way to like kind of get permission to use i don't know the dining hall or something for an event like that so, so you know. she's right still i can't help but feel like the close relationship we cultivated from spring through autumn is fading away and that makes me incredibly sad sorry about that ごめんなさい。意地悪を言ったつもりはないの。けれど。うん。私が考えなしだったわ。お茶会はしたいけれど、最近忙しいのもあるし。Busy. Perhaps she sees the doubt in my eyes. After all, we've already dealt with the main council events because she quickly apologizes and hangs her head. For a long moment, Rika-san stares into my eyes, then she smiles and tells me she's glad to. Kocha-no-kawari-wa-do? <laughs> Laughter bursts from her lips at my repetition of a joke Mayuri once made. Then she gets to her feet to pour me a fresh cup. I regard her back turned to me as she tells me she'll make us honey tea without the milk this time. Rikasan potters uh, around happily, telling me that a fruit honey will pair best with black tea. Smiling, she picks up a jar with a drawing of an orange on the label. As I watch her dip her teaspoon into the translucent liquid, I resent myself for not being able to come clean with her. I cross paths with her by chance. I Erika-san stops her wheelchair beside me and joins me in looking out at the scenery. What? Shirahane I return her feline smile with my own. Telling her that I've encountered a brand new mystery. Jokingly, she puts her hands together like the titular genie in the American sitcom. Hers or Rika? Because Rika was the one hers. <laughs> she looks down, grumbling to herself, but soon raises her head again to look out at the silently falling snow. I was about to say, that's like quite a snowfall outside those windows, like, jeez. Her face is perfectly expressionless. I am entranced by the delicate beauty of her androgynous features. Oh, <laughs> she answers languidly, as though her thoughts are still out there in the snow. I ask her what she's doing here at this time of night. So it's a she answers like it's no big deal, but I feel my neck and cheeks flush hotly as I catch her meaning. Go-go-me-na-sai. <laughs> She 
She grins, showing off the jar of pills. Realizing she was teasing me, I flush even hotter and feign boxing her <laughs> around the ears. She smirks at me. I don't give my comment much thought, but Erika-san's expression turns sad, and I immediately wonder whether I said something wrong. I'm not sure what to say now. She scratches her head roughly. No, mine you hanashta yatsaga. Sorosoro ichigatsamo arida. Chidori no koto de. Mohitotsu sodan stein daga. Otanjo bika yo hirakita hit the koto na. Ah. I was like, what's happening with Chidori? What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing's wrong. It's her birthday. Zee kai. Sasagawa me tante da. Present to dakeja nandashina. Mm, we gotta go all out, yes. Present to the kid of Jubin, you're a conde credo my chest floods with warmth to see how deeply she cares for her Amitya partner. I nod. Clapping my hand to my chest, I tell her to leave everything to me. Someone I once knew wrote that we walk away from our dreams afraid that we may fail or worse yet, afraid we may succeed. A line from the movie Finding Forrester. Hmm. February 1st. Oh my god! Oh, that's... What? Oh, look at the what? What are, is this? A kitty and maybe a teddy bear, or are they both kitties? I can't tell. But this is really cute. What? Oh my god! So much food, and of course the tea. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm oh yeah. Oh yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Over twenty girls are gathered to celebrate Chidori Takasaki's birthday. The group consists of most of our class, as well as several upperclassmen, who have received one-on-one -on -one ballet instructions from her. Erika-san brings the birthday girl uh, with her to Isnik, and as soon as the door opens, we all yell out our congratulations. <gasps> Takasaki-san freezes, eyes wide with surprise. <laughs> her face. Funny coincidence, we're both February kids. Ooh, how nice. How nice, Chidarin. Still looking bewildered, Takasaki-san does as she's instructed. Slowly, her expression relaxes and she turns a dazzling smile on us all. And with that, the surprise birthday party gets into full swing. Chidori,お誕生日おめでとう。これでようやく私と同い年になったね。え、いちごって私よりも年上だったの？このクラスの中では一番早生まれなのだよ。
お誕生日おめでとうございますです。Wait. I'm confused. If Ichigo was、uh, born after Ringo, why does Ringo say, like, addresses her with Donnae's son? Anyway, as I watch her thank them with a breezy smile, I think to myself how much Takasaki san has changed. The days and weeks spent with Erika san have softened her. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Erika san. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. We teach you go being more extroverted and dependable when younger, I assume. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Following her gaze, I see Ichigo san handing over her present a knitted hat with ear flaps that looks like a frog. Oh, that's so cute! It's really cute, but for some reason, Takasaki san's smile seems pasted on. Ah, I got it. Huh? What's wrong? Why don't you like it? <laughs> Treasured possessions, huh? これは冬のお出かけが楽しみですな。せせっかくだけれど、これは家に戻った時に使わせてもらうわ。学院指定の冬用の帽子もあるし。A cat like smirk graces Erika san's face, while Ichigo san looks, like,、uh, looks a little crestfallen. Erika san no present wa? Janto yo i ste aru yo. Kore de wasrete chao ne mo a t e r a r e n a i She looks questioningly to me for my own offering, and I show her the perfume I've bought.、Uh, I've brought, sorry. Oh, it's cute. Oh, it's cute. So, ye ba omaite ni oi ni bin kan da ta mono na. Eh? So. If you say so, she mutters to herself and scratches her head, pulling an exaggerated grimace. Twisting her mouth into a sardonic smile, she nudges me、uh, over toward Takasaki san. She's pleased by the perfume I give her, but. As I expected, she's a hundred times more delighted by the handmade gift from her Amitya partner. Of course! I wanted you, what would you expect? At her signal, the door opens and the members of the Council of Nicaea enter with Rika san at their head, bringing several large cakes with them. Several? Several? Several large cakes. Hitotsdaki are short of cake, you are. Oh, my no tanjo be cake, dio. Scuru no kekko, kuro stand the color. Yoko as you at the crayon. My heart swells as I watch Takasaki san fling her arms around Erika san. I'm sure that everyone else feels the same way. The happy scene giving us the kind of fuzzy feeling you get after listening to a sweet fairy tale. Aww. I'm sure that everyone else feels the same way. The happy scene giving us the kind of fuzzy feeling you get after listening to a sweet fairy tale. Aww. I'm sure that everyone else feels the same way. The happy scene giving us the kind of fuzzy feeling you get after listening to a sweet fairy tale. No. She never would have been caught dead saying such things back then. Takasaki san has changed under the influence of her book loving Amitya. Cute. An indescribable feeling fills my chest as I watch my bookworm body smiling. Short cake is what she said. Cotch the chocolate whole cake and fruits that are sorry not the whole cake. Shirahane Kaicho Sakura. みんなでこいつらをやっつけちまおう
Everyone cheers and thanks us for our efforts. I got the idea to make extra cakes when I was helping Erika-san with the birthday cake and we ended up making too much batter. We're getting a bit of perspective. カノジョと彼女のアミティエとの物語は続く。学院に入学した彼女たちは晴れてアミティエ同士となった。アミティエになった行き先は細かく記されていなかったけれど、困ったことになっただけ記されていた。そしてその感情の意味が明かされないままに彼女たちはアミティエとして様々な経験をしていく苦手な教科を熱心に教えてもらったことオリエンテーリングで組んだ時につまらない意地から足をくじいた自分を心からの善意で助けてくれたこと それを機に互いに友人だと認め合い苦手なクラシックバレエの授業では共に教え合い練習を重ねたことをそしてアミティエと時を重ねるほどに惹かれ合っていることに気づいたのだと綴られていた アミティエと向き合っていると自分にはない美しさに惹かれていたのだと顔の造作ではない体の内側から発せられる生命力がもたらす自然な輝きに見せられていった自分の中から塔に消え失せてしまった輝きにアミティエが何かしら真剣に向き合う時は決まって膝の
共に過ごした仲間との別れをそんなに簡単に割り切ることができるのかという思いだったともすれば父母よりも比重が重くなった旅の仲間をそんなに簡単にとこれから始まる物語は裏切りを選んだ少女と全てを受け入れた少女のお話はい。You were totally grinning to yourself, she teases me. I retort back to my bookworm buddy who's taking up shop in front of my desk. Takasaki-san nods earnestly and I feel my face flush. Uh, looking vindicated, Erika san turns to the others to seek their agreement, too. This, this. This, this. I didn't see a bad face, but. So, what was the good thing? The good thing. Yeah, she was、uh, thinking of how she gets to keep playing detective. At the time, I was thinking that I was finally free to start solving the mysteries that would lead me back to Mairi. But I can hardly tell them that. Oh, what does she want to make a girl? You didn't know Sasaki Shimani Moye and I Hanashka? Sammy she, you know? Nanika, Nayami got to go to Nayami to you, Yurimo. Ureshi Kotoga, to you know, say Kaino Yona Kigashimas this year. Ureshi Koto to Yeba, so none of the kiddo. Eh, Ureshi Koto? 白羽さんが思い出し笑いをするなんて珍しいわね思い出し笑いもしかしてそれって恋愛絡みとかえそそれは
Since I can't tell the truth, I find myself fumbling around for what to say. Erika-san is staring at me with a look that plainly reads, Are you her real? <laughs> I don't have any good memories of love letters. It's this lovely weather. Oh god. I guess she doesn't have good memories, does she? Yeah, that one, that's the one. Alright, the phrase love letter sparks a memory. I answer without really thinking. Uh, sorry, I missed your message, Chidorin. Erika is a great narrator, her voice is very pleasant. Yep. Yep, she is. Reminded of her, their prank from back in spring, the twins look down, their shoulders drooping. I hurry to reassure them, and I am relieved when they smile. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could say that. But when I was younger, there was a boy who pulled a prank on me. Erika-san smirks, but I know she's being genuine. <laughs> she did not expect that. Realizing that Erika-san is now red as a tomato, I abruptly break off. I glance at the twins while Takasaki-san folds her arms, staring intently at Erika-san's grimacing red face as though she can read something there. So, Erika, you got a love letter? No comment. <laughs> Erika san remains tight lipped, even as Takasaki san bears down on her. As they continue talking amongst themselves, I slide my gaze over to where Erika san is chatting with Suabuki san. The flow of people to her seat never ceases, and she listens to all their troubles without a hint of complaint. So Suddenly, I'm struck with the urge to open up to my media partner about Mairi. The feeling swells up in, from my chest and lodges in my throat like tears. But... Narrowing my eyes against the cool, dazzling rays of sunlight falling across her back, I start to go over what I'm going to do in my head. A real loser is someone who's so afraid of not winning, he doesn't even try. I think of a line from the movie Little Miss Sunshine. I know that movie. Because... The Bloody Mary incident was deemed to be the reason a lot of the uh, a lot of third year students all quit at once. And Miss Karasumori's name came up in the process of pursuing it. Yatsushiro Senpai blocked her plan to use the incident to her own advantage and censured her for it. Then uh, Miss Karasumori left the academy. <laughs> But I found out nothing more than when I asked around the last time. It seemed that Miss Karasumori was a woman of few words who rarely spoke about her personal life. Since she wasn't the type to play favorites with her students, there were no girls who were particularly close to her. And among the staff, they were the two people closest to the reticent Miss Karasumori. 
I've already spoken with Miss Ishizuka and Sister Basket. She won't tell me anything. She probably thinks she said all there was to say that night in the textiles room. It seems to me that Yatsushiro Senpai arrived at the same, uh, sorry, at the name Tulpa of Agape via the fallout of the incident caused by Miss Karasumori. I even voiced that hunch to her. Again, that line comes back to me. A real loser is someone who's so afraid of not winning, he doesn't even try. All I can do is take comfort in the fact that I am trying. If I keep pushing my way forward, never giving up, I'll eventually find what I'm looking for. That is generally a good attitude to have, not just in this instance, but in life. I decide to shift the focus of my investigation from Miss Karasumori to Sh Shiori Akitsu and begin anew. It's no use. Leaning back from the pages I've been staring at, I press my fingers to my temples and let out a deep sigh. I tried looking back at the records kept by successive presidents of the Council of Nicaea since I knew Yatsushiro Senpai had looked through them too, but... When I combed through the almanacs before, I was looking for anything to do with the Tulpa of Agape or Shion Basket. This time I had my eyes peeled for those two names, but I haven't encountered them uh, anywhere. There's nothing at all written about Shiori Akitsu. I suppose there wouldn't be. After all, it would have fallen to Yatsushiro Senpai, her Amitya partner, to write it. As I'm gloomily turning to the next page, I hear the door opening. <laughs> My media partner smiles at me, a bunch of documents in her hand. After the meeting disbanded, I wasn't expecting anyone else to return to Isnik, so I have to come up with an excuse on the spot. So, Rikasan doesn't probe my life further. She goes to file her papers away in a binder. Rising from my seat at the desk, I join her, telling her I'll help. She glances over at the stack of almanacs on my desk. I think I detect a trace of suspicions beneath her quiet words, and I steal a look to try to gauge her expression. Her eyes remind me of ominous thunderclouds rolling in from afar, hiding something I can't comprehend. これでおしまいね。本当にお手伝いすることはないかしら。え、大丈夫。リッカさんは。そう。なら先に寄宿舎へ戻っているわね。<笑> Something in her gaze gives me a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. With that, she takes her leave, maintaining her curios uh, curiously indifferent attitude. A soft but long sigh escapes my lips uh, like the air from a balloon. I sensed something off about my Amitya partner's demeanor for a while now, indistinct but almost tangible. I wish she'd just tell me what's going on with her. I murmur sardonically, sagging back against the bookshelf. In the silence, I become aware of a small but strange sound. It's so quiet you'd barely notice unless you were straining your ears for it. It's like a bird's cry. No, it's a human sound. Ah. Of course. <gasps> I was wondering how could she hear anything when she's alone and this is not like a uh, a ghost story or anything. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. The dying light of the day casts the room in shadow, deepening the gloom that's pulling around the edges. 
In one dark corner, I pick out the shadowy form of my stepmother and stifle a scream. Nausea surges up in me at the sight of her standing there, crisscrossed by scarlet light and inky shadow. She comes to me whenever I'm faltering or feeling afraid. She is? The idea that my media partner is lying to me shakes me to the core. I simply thought she was keeping something from me. But that's... She, ta she takes slow, deliberate steps toward me. Fighting back the nausea in my throat, I tell her she's lying, but she simply laughs it off. Tsuabuki-san's face flushes before, flashes sorry, before my mind's eye, and I stagger back against the shelf. <laughs> A feeling of weightlessness washes over me like I'm sinking back into the bookshelf. <laughs> um, is there anything wrong with that? My head is hot and stuffy, the backs of my eyes burn. It's second period, but neither my head nor my heart have fully awoken. Cupping my hands beneath the icy water running from the faucet, I feel its bite across my palms. Hi, this is not really helping. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a quick run to the toilet soon. This sound of water is... Mm, not... <laughs> After splashing my face with cold water several times and wiping it dry with a handkerchief, I feel a little more normal. Thank you for turning off the faucet. <laughs> my head still feels strangely muggy, like it's been stuffed with smoldering cotton wool, but it's better than before. Stepping out from the chilly washroom into the corridor, the warm air settles heavily over me again. This isn't the fatigue that accompanies illness, but rather... A voice addresses me from behind, and I turn around. <sighs> Coming closer, she stares intently into my face, as though searching for a sign. Then she points toward her own face. So, Mayo. I tilt my head questioningly as her brows knit together with concern. Erika, who knew you nara, but to shigana ruka deteru ayo? Me maka janai, moskoste, dareka ni nakasare de mustano? Ah, no, that's not it. <laughs> Interesting. Both of the answers mean the same, but like the difference is what? And like the attitude? Like, that's not it, it's calmer, and no, it's like a no, that's not what's happening. Um, yeah, I guess the second one then. <laughs> Quickly, I rack my brain for how to respond. All I can come up with is another weak denial. She reaches out with graceful fingers. When I instinctively shut my eyes, I feel them dance gently over my eyelids, the intimate gesture revealing her genuine concern for me. Her warm fingertips caress my eyelids like flickering memories, and the gentle tickle of her kind gesture makes me giggle. She pulls her hand back, and I suddenly wish I'd waited a little longer to say anything. It's not a lie, I'm telling her one facet of the truth. Really? she asks me, gazing earnestly into my face. 
すごく興味深い本で読むのがやめられなくて Right Infuriated and scared by my stepmother's words, I staggered back into the bookshelf. My impact knocked a book to the floor. It was so subtle you wouldn't notice it without close examination, but there was something unnatural about the depth of the bookshelf. This led me to a discovery. There was another shelf hidden behind the back of the first one. The hidden shelf looked like it hadn't been accessed for a long time, since it was layered with years' worth of dust and all the book's pages were yellowed. I picked up a volume at random and scanned over it. The aged tome was from before the academy became Saint Angrekum Academy. My mind had wandered back to yesterday in Iznik. Takasaki-san's doubtful tone pulls me back to the present. I... So sorry. I nod. A sparkle wipes the suspicion from Takasaki-san's eyes, and she comments that I can be very cute sometimes. What do you mean, Shirahane-san? I thought I was never going to be a person. I thought I was 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 a person. Sticker. <laughs> I've picked up Yatsushiro Senpai's penchant for old lingo. I explained to her that it comes from an old word for referee and now refers to people who insist on following rules to the letter. Oh, I didn't know it came from an old word for referee. As I watch her nod appreciatively, I think of Rikasa. I have a new source of information, but it's going to take time to go over all those piles of old records. I was able to read through all the books in Iznik because it was the winter break, but I spent every waking minute cooped up in there. But even if I bring the old records out... I can't tell anyone about the hidden records. It's a bad habit of mine to say things without thinking. Now I'm locked into this. <laughs> I summon a smile. Takasaki-san reassures me. She gives me her word. But secrets always come out. Ay ay ay. So I hear you got your hands on a good book. Oh no. Oh no. Is that Erika? Those are the words I find before me when I fo open the folded scrap of paper that's passed to me during class in the dead, uh, dreaded specimen room. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, alright. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna quickly run to the toilet. <laughs> Give me a couple minutes, I'll be right back.
right? Just, just, just look okay, yeah, okay. All right. Hurriedly, I glance around the room. My gaze lands on Erika-san's smug features and Takasaki-san, with her hands clasped together and head bowed to me in supplication. Oh no! <laughs> Takasaki spilled. Aww. Thank you for the hearty bow. Another thought comes to mind, crowding out the fact that Takasaki-san reneged on her promise. Erika-san ni nara. I can't tell anyone about the old texts I found in Iznik. I know that, but at the same time, trying to read through all of them in stolen moments is going to take way too long. Never. No. But, girl, you gotta ask for help. Come on. I argue back and forth internally. <laughs> I remember something Erika-san said after she and I Got the rundown on the werewolf of the bell tower incident from Yatsushiro Senpai. Mm -hmm. She had a point. Catching my bookworm buddy's subtle wave, I surreptitiously press my hand to my chest to still my inner turmoil. In the end, I decide to put my trust in my bookworm buddy. There we go. Thank you. Let's go. Her eyes sparkle with childish delight as she makes uh, grabby hands at the pile of books <laughs> stacked on my desk in his neck. Grabby hands. Grabby, grabby. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Once Erika-san knew it was going to get uh, back to Takasaki-san sooner or later, so I decided to bring her on board too. <laughs> Without revealing their true origin, I solicited her help in reading through the books. I related how I found some old school records in the library that were earmarked for disposal. A little white lie. ニカヤの会の人たちや花火さんにも手伝ってもらえばいいんじゃないこれ学院の記録なのでしょ怖い話苦手だものね。ニカヤの会のみんなにはもともと捨てるものだから学院に関するものとはいえ協力してとは言いづらくて。あ、そんな顔をしないで。私もつい絵里香へ面白そうな本を見つけたっていう話を言ってし
でもすごいわねこんな難しい本集中してずっと読んでいられないわ Yeah, well, she's looking for something very specific and、uh, she has some、uh, internal motivation going on.、Uh, these old tomes are from back when s a i n t a n g r e k u m Academy was known as Awashima Seminary. Their pages contain records of daily life, but the grammar and phrasing is different to modern day language. It takes a considerable mental effort to parse each paragraph. ソフがこの時代の小説をよく読んでいたからその蔵書を私も読ませてもらっていたし処置というのは本当なのね<笑>、yes. エリカが本なら辞書でもいいって聞いたときは冗談かと思ったけれど<笑> Yeah, it seems not She looks over at エリカ who's hunched over her book as though greedily devouring its knowledge and sighs deeply <laughs> 冗談は言うけど嘘はつかないんだったわよね With that she gets up and goes over to plunk a cup of tea in front of Erika おおなんだよ休憩か<笑>そうよそれにそろそろタイムリミットもうそんな時間かよせっかく面白い記述を見つけたってのによえもしかしてた In my excitement, I'm about to name the、uh, Tulpa of Agape, but I quickly cut myself off. What is USP? I don't think I know that one. Taking the proffered book from her, I see that the passage refers to the goddess of truth. My vision narrows to a pinprick at the sight of this term, so closely tied up in my Amitya's disappearance. Suddenly, there's only me and those words. セーボマリアを称える祭事だよ。真実の女神は、聖母祭の聖母役に選ばれた者が対象となる。そして。ユニークセリングポイント ?Sorry, what, what were you referring to? <laughs> I guess I caught the message a bit too late or I didn't put it in the right context.、Um, her voice reaches my ears but doesn't make its way into my brain. All I can see are the words on the page before me as I scan through them, seeking any new information I can find. Ah, ah, it's what actually USP means. Okay, sorry. I thought maybe you were referring to like <laughs> something in the story being a unique selling point. And I just like, okay, my mind, yeah. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm so sorry. But yeah, thank you for looking that up for me. へえつまり石部金吉な人が選ばれるわけねおおお前にしては面白い言い回しを知ってるじゃないかニュアンスは微妙に間違ってるけどなまあこの時代の記述では名だけでまだ消えちまううんぬんの話はないみたいだが Passing my eyes over the text I see that she's right It just mentions the name I suppose it wasn't a clue after all I must have voiced my thoughts loud again. She peers into my face and I look back into her eyes without really seeing her. Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't Everybody's confused. Me as well on the other side of the screen. <laughs> they both already know that I stayed up all night, so they seem to believe my excuse. Takasaki san kindly offers me another cup of tea. When I shake my head, Erika san digs around in her pocket, then holds out whatever it is she found in no, there. No, 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 no,
something sweet. In her hand is a little box of chocolate. Say thanks. Open your mouth. <laughs> I guess say thanks, right? Right? We're not gonna go that far, right? No, we are. We are. We are opening our mouth. Okay. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, if if we're talking about this, uh, I can also offer you some uh, Halloween chocos. There you go. There you go. Just in spirit, you know, and like uh, virtual, but uh, there you go. Please don't play tricks. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I thought so too, that's why I got them. I particularly like these, uh, these pumpkins. <laughs> Quite ingenious. I haven't tried the pumpkins though. I tried the others. All right, open your mouth. <laughs> I haven't quite returned to reality after hearing the term the goddess of truth. Without thinking, I... I part my lips slightly. <laughs> oh God, Erika's reaction. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Erika's eyes widen and her cheeks flush. Despite the exasperation in her tone, she unwraps the chocolate and feeds it to me. After I've finished the first one, she feeds me another. Her delicate fingers brush across my lips and I find myself captivated by the scarlet flush that stains her cheeks. I thank her, my vision still hazy, as though my eyes are covered with cobwebs. Chidori is jealous. Seeing Takasaki-san's scandalized look, the realization of what I was doing and with whom finally sinks in. Oh god. Oh. How did we get here from the shy girl that stepped across the the um like that that stepped into the academy in in the beginning of spring w what's happened <laughs> now we're opening our mouths to be fed <laughs> by other people <laughs> so adds another to her cringe compilation. I guess she's bound to have these moments. She's human too. <laughs> I guess it makes sense in, the, in a way because she feels really comfortable around them, right? So to her in the moment, it didn't seem like that big of a deal. She was just comfy and she didn't have like her barriers and her walls up because uh, she's uh, with, uh, with uh, really close friends. Cheeks is still flushed, my friend uh, pushes a chocolate between her and Mitya partner's lips. <laughs> I pat my cheeks sharply with both hands to try to dispel the strange languor that's come over me. Both Takasaki-san and Erika-san chuckle. Does that work or should I do it too? <laughs> I'm kind of struggling tonight. Uh. <laughs> Abruptly, she breaks off with the grimace, then makes a blatant attempt to change the subject, asking us whether we've heard the news. Hey? Hmm. Oh my gosh, with all of these preparations and events and stuff, the more events? Oh god. It's news to me, but now that she mentions it, I do vaguely remember her saying something along those lines. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> Takasaki-san counters her Amitie partners, teasing with some of her own, and Erika-san spreads her arms wide in a placatory gesture. 
言霊ってやつがある。冗談ならいいが。やってもいいなんて言うな。かなっちまうだろうが。プラケートリー、maybe? いや、OK。These are words I don't normally use.、Um, if I just come wrong, it's true. <laughs>、uh, their laughter echoes through Isnik. The sound is familiar and affable, and though the skies have turned to lead and gray, our spirits remain high. But she's right. Words do have power. It arrives without fanfare, like a sudden downpour. Do we have any volunteers to participate in the recitation we'll be putting on this month? Out of nowhere, Sister Basket suddenly poses the question to us. Amid the sudden explosion of noise in the classroom, one person raises their hand straight up into the air. I took the owner of the voice in. Sorry, I look to the owner of the voice in surprise. Ichigo san. She's putting herself forward for it. She did eagerly volunteer to perform a solo at the choir recital. So I know she can be proactive when she feels like it, but when it came to the recitation. Maybe she changed her mind after seeing、uh, you all crush it. As I'm puzzling over her decision, Ringo san also raises her hand and gets to her feet, declaring that she personally will participate too. Then, having received Sister Basket's praise, both sisters turned to me. Don't drag, don't drag other people in this! <laughs> Ichigo san asserts confidently. Oh god. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> She claps her hands together delightedly, pleased that people are actively volunteering. <laughs> But I didn't volunteer myself. Yeah, th that's the thing. She already did a lot last time. That means now she can get a pass because she's already doing a bunch of other things as well. She's the president of the council, and then she also has her library duty. Like, leave her alone. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Ichigo san. She waves away my protests, but Rika san blinks as though suddenly snapped out of a daydream by my cry and stands up to voice her objection. Ano, watashi mo isogashi desu shi. Her attempt to decline is cut off by a cry from an onlooker, telling her to just do it. Why don't you just do it? Ah, yeah, yeah. Easy, Naika, Lord of Geki. Shirahane Modern Dashi. Amitia Nara Incho Mo Kyoryuk Shinakchana. So they were. So, eh? Erika san claps her hands together in agreement. The rest of the class joins in the applause. Yay, we're so happy we don't have to do anything. We can just sit on our own asses. Ah.、Uh. I understand that it's for the purpose of the story because they're the main characters and we gotta see them involved in these things and blah blah blah, but、uh, it irks me to a certain extent. <laughs> Sorry about that.、Um, while Rika san seems unsure how to respond to the flattery, there's a gleam in her eye when she turns to me that tells me she's not entirely averse to it. <laughs> <laughs> her voice is low, but my pricked ears easily pick up her whispered comment. Somehow I have to find a way out of the situation. I think Erika Yaegaki would be a better fit. I think Chidori Takasaki would be a better fit. <laughs> so, who do we throw under the bus? I would say maybe、uh, she would propose Erika, but I don't know. 
Oh no, the option is Chidari. Chidari? Okay. Okay. It's mostly because my eyes just happened to meet hers, but... Clutching at straws, I throw Takasaki-san's name into the ring. She blinks at me in bewilderment. I don't want to admit that I simply picked her because I wanted to foist it off onto someone else. I we've been seen through. Seeing the hurt bloom in her eyes, I quickly tell her she's wrong. I trail off, guilt welling up inside me at the glint of tears in her eyes. Apparently, taking this as an end to the discussion, Sister Basket tells her to sit. Oh no, I really put my foot in it. I... <laughs> sneaky. Sneaky, 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 Chidori. Flustered, I cast around for any escape route I can find. But everyone averts their eyes, too shy to participate. Yeah, of course. Only one person meets my gaze. She looks startled by my whisper, but then a radiant smile spreads across her features. I mean, it it amounts to spending time with Erika. Uh, sorry, not Erika. <laughs> with Rika. So then I guess she would like that. Rika-san is participating and given the feelings she has for her. <gasps> Suddenly I feel the chill presence of my stepmother creeping up my spine. I'm wavering. <laughs> Forced into agreement by the pain in my chest, I nod in assent, in assent as does Rika-san. Interesting. We're all stumped by her quick comeback. Apparently, just a sec. Um, apparently, even Erika-san is sometimes lost for words. Comedy. Oh god. They smugly answer that there's a reason why they can't do the recitation with just the two of them. Uh, this uh, what what's so particular about it? Uh, puffing her chest out, Ichigo-san surveys the classroom. I pretend to take a swipe at her and she jerks back, laughing apologetically. After class on the way to the chapel, I am assailed by a sense of deja vu. We've had this exchange before. Right, it was... そう、<笑> What am I reading, Ichigo? What the heck? Immediately after morning prayers, I went to protest to Ichigo-san. And she apologized to me exactly the same as she is doing now, and teased me the same way too. This back and forth with me constantly defending myself against her teasing has dragged on all the way until after class. 
Ichigo is unhinged, absolutely. <laughs> Ichigo san sticks out her tongue, but. Rika-san advances on her, pulling a scary face. Suo-san wa okoraseru to kowai no yo. Yodoshi kowai hanashi o kikasareru n dakara. She says mysteriously. As I raise my voice to protest, Ichigo-san happily suggests that this sounds like fun. Yodoshi kaidan banashi. Sore wa saiko desu ne. Ringo-san nods happily, hands balled into fists. It seems like today is one of those days where I get teased all day long. <laughs> Still. It's been equally as long since I've heard her joking around. Ichigo-san scratches her head awkwardly, clearly not having meant for me to overhear. After a moment of thought, she beckons for me to bend down and leans in to whisper. <laughs> ここのところリちゃん元気ない感じだったじゃない。だからさ。みんなで朗読劇をしようって。リちゃんの特効薬はそうちゃんでしょ。前に一緒にやりたかったって言っていたし、友達が元気ない顔してるのって嫌だし。
and that's it's that's endearing. It's endearing because it's not coming from a bad place at all. It's just uh, maybe just she's showing a little bit more than she usually does, so it takes other people by surprise. Uh, but it's a good kind of surprise, I would say. <laughs> I'm assailed by the same sense of deja vu when this relation is before. It's because I'm remembering that summer day when we performed the recitation together. Or maybe it's because I saw her standing up on the uh, dais with her hair like golden wheat. There are other upperclassmen here who will be participating in the recitation too. Sister Basket smiles genially around at us. The first thing we do is introduce ourselves. In the summer I was introducing myself to Kamikado-senpai, who I already knew well, so there was nothing to be nervous about. Now as I look around the chapel, even though the older students are familiar to me... Hmm? One of them is Mio Hagiwara, who was Komikato Senpai's uh, Amitya partner. And the other is. Hi, Mizuki Hokama, the pianist from the choir club, who is good friends with Rika san. As it turns out, the two of them are both participating in the recitation. Oh, that, that's cute. Usually each year group puts on their own recitation, but after the rave uh, reviews our performance with Komikado Senpai received, we're doing it jointly again this time too. However, <laughs> Although they didn't seem to mind, I feel like at the time I was so desperate to solve the mystery that I really hammered them over the head with all my blunt questions. <laughs> Hokama Senpai tugs gently on my sleeve. She's telling me it's my turn next. <laughs> Happy to hear this, I thank Hokama Senpai. That's so cute. She quickly hides herself behind Rika san but offers me a little nod in return. Cute, 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 cute. Then she whispers something too quiet for me to hear. Sister Basket hands out printed pamphlets to each of us. One by one, she assigns us our parts, then gives us an introduction to the basics of recitation or staged reading. It's the second time I've heard it. She must have some reason not to start at the beginning. Doing as instructed, I open the pamphlet and scan down to the designated section. Having all these extra pairs of eyes on me that weren't there last time makes me nervous. However... I'm the only one here who's done this before. I smile around at everyone, doing my best to settle their nerves. I'm impressed by how good she is, despite this being her first time. Sister Basket clears her throat, shaking me from uh, my reverie. And I rushed to read out my part. お姫様はその声がどこから<笑> 
僕が泉の中から玉を拾ってきたら何かご褒美をくれないかな Beneath the light of the setting sun, Rika san's voice reverberates through the chapel. I don't know if I'm going to be a little bit of 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 But not from the recitation as we're all、uh, together. As we, sorry, as we weren't all together then. From when they stood on stage together at the choir reciting. In my mind, Yatsushiro Senpai's voice overlays Rika's sons, and as the scarlet light enshrouds us, an indescribable feeling buds within me. I can feel what she felt. My voice won't come out. It's trapped behind the feelings lodged in my throat. Sister Basket regards me suspiciously. I. Yatsushiro Senpai. Komikado Senpai. Looking up at the silent figure of Christ, I shove my feelings deep down inside. Then, with everyone's eyes on me, I start to read aloud. Oh, so. Strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many other lives. When he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? A line from It's a Wonderful Life. ブリキの木こりは心をなくしたカカシは理性をなくした次は勇気をなくしたライオンでも来るのか I reach the scene in our recitation script where Oz directs those mocking words towards Dorothy なんというかオズが西部劇の主人公みたいな言い回しになっているわね<笑> Uh, I think of the scene from my favorite movie, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, when the kid makes his grand declaration. Sorry. But I'm not thinking of his partner, Butch Cassidy, rather. <laughs> oh, cute. I think of my bookworm buddy, sweet, kind, and bashful, but with a tendency toward braggadacious statements. Braggadacious statements. So,、oh, what a word. Of course, she's not an actual outlaw. <laughs> I mean it in the sense that she lives true to herself. My concentration broken by my amusement, I massage between my brows and turn my gaze out the window. To give my eyes a break, I stare out at the distance. Virgin greenery should have been a balm, but we're in the depths of winter. Skeletal trees and snow are all that greet me. Finding this change of scenery lacking, I look back to the library. The polished wood floor is pooled with weak winter sunlight. As I watch it shimmer gently, I relax my eyes and my mind, and my thoughts wander to trivial things. We've begun practicing for the recitation, and just as in summer, I have been tasked with writing the script. But we can't move on to proper rehearsal until said script is finished. Currently, we're honing our technique using another fairy tale picked out by Sister Basket. Wrenching my gaze away from the puddle of light, I look around the room. The library has seen a lot of patrons lately, but the day is deserted despite it being lunchtime. A yawn works its way up, to, up my throat as I stare barely around the empty space. Ay, please don't do that. <laughs> It's gonna trigger one in me too. <laughs> Suddenly, I hear the sound of the door opening and I hastily straighten my posture, trying to look alert. Rubbing the haze from my eyes, I watch as the visitor makes a hesitant but direct beeline for me. Reference no goyo desu ka? <laughs> that took a bit. 
Judging by the way she heads straight over to the desk without glancing at the shelves, I assume she must have a book she wants directing to. However, since I don't recognize her from class, she must be an older student. She's holding a large paper bag in her hands and seems to be working herself up to say something. Then I notice another girl standing a bit behind her, seemingly to serve as moral support, although that girl seems even more nervous. Everyone? At once? What do you mean? So... Now I wonder whether she's here as a representative for our club. Silence stretches out between us for a moment before the nervous girl who's hanging back gives the girl holding the bag a prod in the back. <laughs> With a jerky dip of her head to me, she hurries away. It's only after the two have disappeared that I realize I've landed myself in a sticky situation. There are other ways to phrase it. A kickback, a bung, money under the table. And I've accepted it. My blood runs cold at the idea. <laughs> Maybe read that before drawing conclusions, because we don't know yet what this is about. Expecting a request to increase their club's budget or something similar, I open up the bag to find it. I've never received a bribe before, but I frown down on the contents of the bag. A pile of small, neatly wrapped packages, each about the size of a pen case. I shake my head at my overactive imagination. If it's money for their club that they're after, they'd be getting their priorities backward. I consider what might be in the packages. Really, I should take them straight to Sister Basket or Dorm Mother Katabami. However, The student who handed me the bag was like a cornered animal. It wouldn't be right to condemn her without first understanding her reasons. I decide that first things first, I need to figure out the why. With that, I stick my hand into the big bag and rummage around for the letter. However, I can't seem to find one. The only place left to look in is inside the many small packages. <laughs> Reflecting that I've relied on that same saying before, I summon my resolve and start to open one of the parcels. As I am unwrapping it, it occurs to me that the paper is awfully cute for a bribe. Oh god. Oh god, what's happening? With the wrapping removed, I nervously open the small box. Inside I find colorful bite-sized sweets in red, gold, white and black, laid out neatly between little dividers. Choco. Oh, is it Valentine's Day? Because it's February, right? The moment I say the word aloud, I suddenly remember what day it is today. <laughs> I so. I yeah. Uh, it's a bit lower. Here we are. Okay. <sighs> After class, I hurry toward the chapel for recitation practice. Inside, I look around but don't see any sign of my fellow performers. Above the chancel, I, the figure of Christ gazes down on me. Uh, sorry. Gazes down on one lone person. Suo-san! Pika. Okurete, gomennasai. Minna wa? Baskia kyouyu ni kyou na yo ga haitta toka de, kyou no renshu wa oyasumi ni natta no. Kakuji jishuren datte. As I regain my breath after rushing over, it um, occurs to me. 
to wonder why Rika-san is still here. She answers my questioning look with a smile. Touched by her kindness, I surreptitiously touched the little package I brought with me. She looks a little startled by my suggestion. She readily agrees. お星さん、南の青いお星さん。どうか私をあなたのところへ連れてってください。焼けて死んでも構いません。バカを言うな。お前なんか一体どんなものだい。たかが鳥じゃないか。お前の羽で as we read from Kenji Miyazawa's The Nighthawk Star, a stillness settles over my mind, a faint flame burning at its center. I chose this tale from Sister Basket's pile of books out of nostalgia, but reading it aloud, the story resounds in our hearts, soft but certain. Rika-san's performance is passionate and urgent. I feel awed by her skill and versatility. I feel a sense of pride, too. As she reads out the final part of the narrative, I close the book and look straight at her. それからしばらく経って、ヨダカははっきり、そして自分の体が今、リンの火のような青い美しい光になって、すぐ隣はカシオピアザでした。天の川の青白い光がすぐ後ろになっていました。そしてヨダカの星は燃え続けました。the final vibrations of her voice fade into the evening light, and I applaud. Rika-san bows bashfully. She nods admiringly, then lists a few stories of his that she has read. We sit down on a pew to take a break and discuss our thoughts on the story. I wonder if this is how the girls who visited me in the library at lunch felt. Then, using their own courage as inspiration, I turned to Rika-san beside me. She tilts her head curiously, her braids swaying. I hold out the present I hurriedly put together in the time I had during break and after class. Her eyes widen in surprise before filling with tears. A guilt I'd almost forgotten tightens my chest. She's so happy she's crying, oh gosh. I mean to say something about how it's a thank you for all she does for me. Or because she's my Amitya partner, but the words die on my lips. As I lapse into silence, Rika-san gets to her feet and moves to the pew behind us. There, she crouches down and picks something up. She returns with the box tied with a ribbon. We both open our presents together. My gift to her is a slab of fresh-made chocolate cut into quarters, rich with cream and dusted with cocoa powder. From Rika-san I receive a mountain of vividly colored truffles. Oh, that's pretty. Her smile is so dazzling I almost avert my eyes. But I can't do that to my best friend when she's showering me with such unfeigned, frank affection. Letting her sunny smile wash over me, I feel like I want to do something more for her. Eh? 
I tell her I'd like her to try mine too, and she nods eagerly. Then... I take one of the pieces of the chocolate I made between my fingers and raise it to her lips. Rika-san blinks at me. What are we doing? Are we doing the feeding thing again? Rika's cried twice this episode alone, both times from happiness. Aww. I murmur. Okay, then. Whatever floats your boat. She nods, her cheeks flushed, then picks up one of her truffles and brings it to my mouth. <laughs> 何? This time the flesh creeps beyond uh, her cheeks and all the way down her neck. I pretend not to see it, acting as though the red glow to her face is from the setting sun. At first there's a slight bitterness to the truffle, but then it melts into a puddle of sweetness across my tongue. From spring until now, it hasn't all been sunshine and roses. Some experiences have been more bittersweet than others, still. As I watch her feign exasperation ever so cutely, I wish with all my heart for our relationship to continue like this forever. Ay, ay, ay. Rika has been a rock the last few seasons, she deserves some kindness, yeah. The one thing that's not really sitting so well with me is that Suo seems to be displaying some jealousy and she is at least, you know, partially aware of it, but then she doesn't actually address it. She kind of like shoves it under the rug a little bit, like why would you be feeling that way when all that Trika has done is be by your side, you know? Romantically, there's nothing that can happen between them as far as I can read the situation because Suo doesn't feel that way. So if she wants to be romantic and involved with someone else, she's allowed to. But yeah, well, maybe that gets explored a bit more later. Uh, there's some interesting complicated emotions she's exhibiting here. Yeah, I guess so. Time whirls by like a snowstorm. After much hard work, I've finished the script for The Wonderful Wizard of Oz to be performed at the recitation and we're able to start practicing in earnest. I'm playing the part of the scarecrow, who's without a brain. Ichigo-san uh, is the teen woodman, missing his heart, and Ringo-san has taken the role of the cowardly lion. Okawa-senpai is reading the parts of the eponymous Wizard of Oz and the good witch Glinda. Ogihara-senpai is in charge of the narration. And the lead role of Dorothy has gone to Rika-san, though not without some protest from her. Sister Basket is as passionate about the project as she was during the summer, and we quickly improve under her tutelage. Tut tutelage. Tutelage. What am I saying? Tutelage. Uh, all of our free time after class is dedicated to rehearsals, and our rigorous training is producing visible results. Or should that be audible? Um, it's satisfying to bear witness to our obvious improvement, however. Yeah. Of course, they're always at the back of my mind, and I've been trying to make headway with them in every spare moment available to me, but even so. Uh, 
When I give my assent, everyone complies. Sighing internally, I steal a glance over at the hidden bookcase. Before, I always ended up focusing all of my attention on the main thing, worrying me while neglecting everything else. But now I'm far better at splitting my focus between them and keeping the two separate. That's good, that's good. At her tentative question, I look up at Tsubuki-san, who seems to be debating whether or not to elaborate. Raising her eyes from the documents in her hand, Rika-san pulls the face. What kind of rumors? Got a drive home from work. Uh, oh, take care on your drive. Take care. Thank you so much for dropping by. It's always nice to have you around. Take care. Her brow is furrowed distastefully, as though it pains her to even say the words. No, not quite. Oh, the music. Oh no, what's happening? Oh no, 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 no. I have experience with the shapeshifter of the dorms, the wandering Wendigo, the goddess of truth, Bloody Mary, the green hookman, and the werewolf of Bell Tower. That's six. Okay. But the tulpa of Agape still hasn't revealed itself. <laughs> The Hookman. But I've already exposed the truth behind that particular phantom. Nazgoro how? What? How? How are, is it possible to have sightings around midnight? They're supposed to be in their dorms. So. The original Green Hookman rumors arose from my own attempts to conceal my identity as I searched the art room in the club building for clues as to my area's whereabouts. <laughs> It couldn't possibly be Mayuri, could it? In response to her questioning tone, I bury my emotions deep and tell the gathered members that we'll wait and see. Alright. Madness, as you know, is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. For some reason, that one line from the Dark Knight hovers in my mind. <sighs> she said something about Sparta. <laughs> Yeah, Ichiko-san doesn't seem convinced, but Rika-san says something to her which makes her laugh. I can get the report about it out of my head. I was behind the original Hookman, which other students then tried to catch a glimpse of, and in doing so ended up themselves becoming Hookmen. <laughs> Once they had been warned against attempting any more tests of courage, the phantom evaporated. So what was it doing back again? Could it be? シュウちゃんもそう思うよね。え、え。ん<笑> 
Okay, interesting. All right. かわいらしい名前ね。でしょ。あ、でも一度家に帰ってこなくなっちゃった時があってね。私的にも一緒に探しに行ったんだけど。探しに出た時にサンダルって名前を呼ぶから、すれ違う人に足元見られて辛かった
The more I try to contain them, the bigger my emotions swell. My body burns, my eyes stream. I don't know how much time has passed. The sound of the wind has died down and a thick silence fills the room in its absence. It's like when I arrived at my grandfather's house. Ooh. Okay. Creepy voice time again, I suppose. The walls are close around me, but the space feels dreamlike and untethered from reality. Mayuri. Mayuri nano ne? From the other side of the wall, I hear the voice I've been yearning for. The silence stretches on like the eternal torments of hell. You can't be here. Finally, the voice of my beloved reaches my ears again, and euphoria balloons in my chest. A multitude of emotions swell within me, clogging my throat. Heaven heard my pleas and brought her to me. I sense a deep exhaustion behind her words. Her voice is resonant, but she sounds like she's aged. I think back on the girl I met in spring, the vibrant flower blossoming in our classroom. The girl like a sunflower who made me feel like the sun. I don't sense any of that energy from the Mayuri on the other side of the wall. Ugh. It's like the life has drained from her voice, like the vitality that always shone from her has faded. Like someone has flipped a switch on her back and turned off the light. The wind dies, my eardrums are drowned by the deafening silence. Unease rushes through me. She cuts herself off abruptly and silence falls between us again. Oh no. I wrap my arms around myself tightly, trying to quash the horrible niggling feeling now eating at me. She repeats the same worn words and I realize what it is that's bothering me. Is Mayuri herself the hookman? The intimate atmosphere evaporates and I'm blanketed in a darkness that stinks of fear. Slowly the door to the room opens. Oh god. And there in the doorway stands a talent apparition. Stands a talent apparition? What? By the time I realize that it's a phantom conjured by my own fear, Mayuri's presence has vanished. What is happening? Of all the gin joints in all towns in all the world, she walks into mine. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know, Bear. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Did she actually see something or she imagined it because she was kind of looking for it? But then what's the whole thing with Mighty, with the voice, is she making it up in her mind or is there actually something? I have no idea. Hey Squid, hi hi. Happy Halloween. Um, yeah, I, hmm. Let's try one more scene, okay? Hopefully it's not very long. That line from Casablanca comes to mind when Sister Dahlia stops me as I step out into the corridor after specimen prep. A perfectly ordinary occurrence, right? However, happy day of haunting and doomy. <laughs> That's funny, a funny way to put it. Her opening question is far from usual. The non-ordinary life I chose. As soon as I hear the name, Hookman. 
I assume. I think back on my conversation with Mairi. Her weary words falling heavily in the close air. From my silence, Sister Dahlia intuits that I must already be aware of the rumors. She swipes her bangs out of her eyes, revealing a somber gaze. The sugar thieves will be arriving tonight. Hopefully you have enough set aside to placate their fury. <laughs> I have sweets, uh, but uh, yeah, in Romania we don't really do the whole... Wait, let me see. I can't see myself. There we go. There you go. Have some candy. <laughs> Um, we don't really do the whole trick-or-treating thing, or maybe if children do, they do it like, you know, with relatives and stuff. Because it's not really a Romanian holiday, so like, and some people are, are quite averse to it. Every time this time of year rolls around, there's like, posts and articles of like, how bad it is to celebrate this, because it's not a Christian holiday, it's a pagan thing, and like, um, we're invoking the devil or something, it's just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, some people are really far out there on like that tangent. Uh, so the the trick or treating doesn't really happen around here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, they're good. I tried the smaller ones. I haven't yet tried the bigger one, but I will have one after stream. <laughs> yeah, we see some of that here, but uh, not my circus. Yeah, no, just. <sighs> Better to let those people just, okay, you, you live your life over there and uh, I'm gonna be here content with my own. <laughs> um. She bites her lip, seemingly reluctant to go on. Given her strict adherence to proper etiquette, I'm taken aback to see her make such a gesture. The surprise clears the mental fog that descended on recalling my meeting with Mairi. <laughs> but just dropping in to say hi and congrats and happy holidays and all those things. <laughs> thank you, Squid. Thank you, thank you. Happy Halloween and uh, I guess uh, now that we're heading into November and stuff, we're like basically entering... Uh, holiday season so all the good stuff uh for you this season ahead uh, nice nice plans with your family and so on hope you enjoy it and uh, take care and stuff definitely in the stores um uh, like it's already christmas like uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter that halloween was the day they, they've already stocked up their shelves with christmas stuff and like uh thankfully the supermarket that i uh, most often go to doesn't do this but uh, bigger ones and like other places already start playing Christmas carols before it's even like Halloween they, they don't even wait for Halloween to pass anymore you want to buy Halloween stuff one week before Halloween too bad you should have bought them in December now everything is taken over by the Christmas shelves <laughs> Oh yeah, we started getting Christmas stuff weeks ago. Weeks. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. What can you do? It is what it is. Okay, let's see. What does she want? Uh, sorry, does she want the council to? No. Does she want me to seek out the hookman and resolve the issue? Now that I'm president of the Council of Nicaea, am I expected to personally bring the rumor mill to a halt? I think they wait for the first cool autumn breeze and BAM! Up go the tree! <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I, I think that around here the first cool autumn breeze is a sign for Halloween, so they start that from September, which is fine, it's fine. Um, and then towards the end of October the Christmas stuff starts. Yeah, I can't imagine what it must be like to work in a place where they play carols all day long for like about two months. Uh, I must be going a little. <laughs> I think of Yatsushiro Senpai, always so cheerful and likable. Yeah, that's 
probably because money is so tight this year for many people they're trying to get it get in early yeah i guess so i guess so it is actually a really good thing that um you can buy stuff early for christmas i do that too Although I don't do it uh, in October, <laughs> I do it like mid to end November, something like that. This stuff is out there already. I can already plan my presents uh, and I will not go get into that rush of like uh, the last few weeks where everything is full and stuff. And like, no, no, no. Just do it patiently. That, that, that part is good. I understand that. I understand why it needs to be in advance. Um, yeah. It's just the fact that they're doing it starting October, it's a little bit, it's, 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 it's like overextended. Having worked in a job where they started Christmas music in October, tears, lots of tears. Oh, pet pet squid, pet pet. Oh. Sister Dahlia cuts in, her expression still strained. She looks me over. Her gaze travels from my face to my chest, down to my arms, crossed over my stomach, before finally dropping to my feet. At last she seems to resolve herself. She extricates an envelope from the stack of teaching materials she's holding. A letter? What? She nods, removing the sheet of notepaper from the envelope. Lowering her eyes to it pensively, she reads it aloud. この what who would do that and how would they like have precise times and dates and st what the art room and like why would they send it to this what it's true that i snuck into the art room after hearing the hookman rumors and wondering whether my id could be behind them I can't bring myself to lie. I can't deny that my behavior has been suspicious. I was the one behind the Hookman rumors in the summer too. She bites her lip again. I simply wait for her to continue. しばらくの間、2回の会の活動は停止。それと、3日間の謹慎処分とします。3日では労働劇の本番は白羽さんの役は誰か別の生徒にやっていただくことになるわね。This is incredibly unfair. What? Sister Basket issues her pronouncement from between bitten lips. Oh god, okay. Not the seven mysteries again. Oh god. Oh. It's never ending. Okay. Yeah, I think it's it's yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> She's what? Who would do that? I am so and that was such a I, I feel blindsided and very weirded out uh <laughs> oh you did you're so cute thank you for being here <laughs> super super cute Hmm. I haven't used this overlay in a while for a moment. It uh, malfunctioned, but it looks okay now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Halloween stuff, hey? <sighs> yeah, okay, I am... Oof. 
I don't understand anything that's happening. I have no guess as to what the whole big mystery is. Um, I guess we'll just uh, uh, run along with it and see. <sighs> Poor Sua. I feel for her. That's quite, quite a... Mm -hmm. That's quite a like a nasty punishment for something that they didn't even bother to like someone just wrote them a letter claiming that this person did this and then it's like oh yeah sure let's punish her <laughs> anyway yeah okay thank you for being here tonight it's been as always a pleasure to share this with you I uh, hope you had a nice uh, Halloweeny time. <laughs> and uh looking forward to a nice weekend ahead uh, i'm a little bit tired so my my words don't really come to me and uh yeah that's all i have <laughs> that's all i have at least i dressed up a little bit this was fun um yeah i like the orange and the purple together it's very cute okay oh okay yeah time to say good night night thank you so much for being here yeah oh oh squid it's so nice to have you there to say it close enough <laughs> dressed up for the reformation day um okay not sure what that is squid was the initiator of the big nazmi movement <laughs> so it's always nice uh, to have you around to say it it uh, brings back uh, super nice memories Alright, ah, time time for a rest for me at, at least. Um, Squid is on the other side of the world, so for you, your day is only halfway through or something. Work has made stream watching so much more difficult since I swapped to this team a few years back. Glad I was able to drop in for a few minutes. Oh, thank you for dropping by. Even if it's just a few minutes, it's always appreciated, and it's always nice to hear from you. Good luck with everything at work. You definitely can handle anything, I'm sure. So, fingers crossed for you. 31st of October was the day when Luther started this thing. His thing. Ah, okay, okay, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, sure. And now we're all dressing up for it. It's definitely for that. <laughs> ah, cool. Okay. We don't really celebrate it here for some reason. Yeah, it's not like here as well. It's not really like it's um how do I put it? It's fun for kids though, and so they do it in kindergartens and schools and so on. And uh, it really depends on the parents and more or less where they land on the side of like um, if they view this as something to be celebrated or something to be avoided. <laughs> like I said, quite a lot of people I believe it's something to be avoided. That it's like. Uh, you'll get cursed or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it it goes into a direction that um, I don't know. I feel it misses the point. Um, people can celebrate whatever they want and be happy with it, and it doesn't. It really doesn't need to mean something that it's it's not that deep. Um, and yeah, it's like a cute thing for for kids. And I'm actually glad to see that schools and kindergartens kind of like do something about it and turn it into something fun um i never had it when i was a kid uh, we never did it but it's happening these days so that's nice that's nice progress halloween many celebrate me included not reformation day however ah, okay mm -hmm. i understand all right cool well Hope you've had nice celebrations, or if the celebrations are happening in the weekend or something, uh, have fun. Um, happy spooky night again. <laughs> uh, and I'll see you on Tuesday with more of this weird mystery. Maybe some answers, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Take care. Love y'all. Bye-bye.